Hi, I'm Tony Mesa with TonyMesaRealEstateSchool.com. What we're going to cover today is how to do a rent proration. So when is it that you have a proration of rent? It's when a, the property that is being sold is a rental property. It could be a single family house that's being rented out. It could be a duplex. It could be a 500 unit apartment building. The idea is that there is rent which is being paid by the tenants and at the closing you have to do a calculation called a proration to adjust things fairly between the seller and the buyer. So here in this rent proration, the rent is $900 per month and the closing is June 8th. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to erase part of what's on the board here uh, just so that you can see clearly how I am doing the problem, right? So we have the month of June and the month of June is a 30-day month. It happens to be a month with 30 days in it. Um, here is June 1st and here is June 30th. And the day of closing we said was June 8th. And notice I don't just draw that in the middle. I draw it a little bit towards this side, approximately where it would be belong. That sometimes helps you catch a mistake if you're doing a proration problem. Now, um, both in real practice and also on the state examination, the day of closing belongs to the buyer typically. So normally that means that the buyer is responsible for any expenses of the day of closing. The buyer also receives the benefit of any rent uh, for the day of closing. So here I'm going to put a note, the day of closing belongs to the buyer. Um, when is it on the state exam that the day of closing would belong to the seller? Only if they specifically tell you the day of closing belongs to the seller. So if the question says the day of closing belongs to the seller, then that means the seller would be responsible for the expenses of that day. The seller would also get the benefits of the rent for that day. But if, again, if they don't tell you anything, if they're silent about it, the default is the day of closing belongs to the buyer. Now, let me pull out the different color dry erase markers here. Here's what's happening. On this day right here, on June 1, uh, the tenant paid a full $900 to the landlord. Before the closing, the owner is the seller. After the closing, the owner is the buyer. So when the tenant paid the $900, the tenant paid $900 all to the seller. For what? For the entire month, right? So in other words, when you have a closing, it's not like the tenant only pays you for part of the month that you're going to own it. They just pay the whole rent check. And rent, this is important, rent is usually paid on a monthly basis, right? And rent is paid usually in advance, right? So what does this mean? Um, some people do rent week to week. Uh, you know, somebody could pay their rent once every three months legally or once a year legally, but normally rent is paid on a monthly basis. And here it's monthly rent of $900, we said, right? And then rent is paid in advance. The tenant pays at the beginning of the month for the time period that's coming, right? It's not like the landlord says, pay me at the end of the month for just went by. It's not paid in arrears. Rent is paid in advance. So on this day, the seller got everything. And the seller should be entitled to this part over here because they owned it here. But this part over here, this should go to the buyer, right? That should be something that the buyer receives the benefit of because the buyer owned it for this part of the month. And what's going to happen is for this portion over here, we are going to credit the buyer and we are going to debit the seller. So first let's look at the calculation. You got $900 per month divided by 30 days in this 30 day month. Now look, if the closing was in May, May has 31 days, right? The closing is in February, February is 28 days. But this is a closing is in the month of June. June is a 30 day month. So 900 divided by 30 days gives us $30 per day. So we have a rent of $30 per day, $30 per day. The question then is, how many days is the buyer entitled to here, okay? Um, there are two ways that you could do this calculation. You could say to yourself, the month has 30 days in it. 30 days minus the first seven that belong to the seller leaves us with 23. Or you can count just eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, and go through it that way, and you're going to wind up getting, including the 30th, the 23 days. So we have $30 per day times 23 days. $30 per day times 23 days 
gives us $690. With a proration, however much one side is credited, the other side is debited the same amount. So the correct answer here is you would credit the buyer $690, you would debit the seller the same $690. What does that mean that we are crediting the buyer $690 and we are debiting the seller $690? Crediting the buyer $690 means the buyer is going to bring to the closing $690 less. That's just like them getting a check for $690. They're going to bring that much less to the closing. Debiting the seller $690 means we're reducing the seller's proceeds from the closing by $690. And that makes sense because at the beginning of the month, the seller got $900 and they're not entitled to $690 of that. Okay? Now, do remember that with a proration, it's always the same number that one side gets credited and the other side gets debited. Let me show you something. You're taking the state exam and you've got answer choice C. And answer choice C says credit the buyer $800 and debit the seller $900. That right there is an incorrect answer choice. You don't even have to think about it because it's two different numbers. It's always gotta be the same identical number that one side is credited, the other side is debited. Uh, you can go to TonyMesaRealEstateSchool.com for additional information, including schedules. Thank you very much for watching this video, um, and have a great day. Bye.